In this tutorial, we'll show you how it's possible to create effects like these using simple drag and drop assets from our Warzone pack, as well as useful compositing techniques to help you achieve the best results possible. For our first shot, we'll use Planet Impact Ground 01 and Planet Impact Huge 03, which can both be found in the Planet Impacts category of the Warzone pack. So let's start by bringing this asset in and having a look at it. At this stage we're working quite loosely, just deciding how big or small we want the asset to be. So this gives us part of the effect we're looking for, but we also want that giant fiery explosion to fill the empty space here. So I'll also bring in Planet Impact 03. And I've trimmed it so that this asset only appears after this flash here. So we sort of get this more reserved effect and then suddenly a big explosion. And of course the scale is increased taking advantage of the fact that these assets are 4K to give us the effect that we want within reason. Now to really create and sell the illusion of distance I've created an alpha map here that follows the contours of the mountain and once we set the track map to use that alpha map that really helps to sell the idea that this is a massive explosion happening in the background. And to help this little transition here, I've also simply duplicated it, added a Gaussian blur and just allowed that to sit on top just to sort of help that, that harsh line a little bit. Now since we've added something really bright to our shot, one way we can help uh, sell this effect is by decreasing the exposure of the actual plate itself. So I've created a lumetric color here and simply keyframed the exposure throughout the shot. So obviously lower the exposure when the beam comes down. For any parts that are supposed to be especially bright, we've darkened the plate here. which will also make our final glow effects look more realistic. So the way we achieve the glows is with two adjustment layers, like an advanced two-step glow. The first adjustment layer has a CC radial blur with the default settings and a Gaussian blur to soften that effect. And then using a hard light blending mode allows the highlights to bleed over the dark parts of the image, simulating an exposure adjustment and giving us a more rich colored glow effect but it's only possible to achieve this if we're working in 32 bits uh, per channel here which we can change in the project settings so then when we add our second glow which is simply another adjustment layer with a cc light burst default settings that allows the glow to sort of come through the dark parts of this mountain here creating more contrast and then we just sort of blur it out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then for this adjustment layer, we used a screen blending mode, which gives us this very nice, sort of believable glow, M much less harsh than say using an additive blow, which would bleach out the whole effect. But because there are dark spots within the explosion and the assets properly exposed, we can go quite heavy with our glow here and can still preserve the detail. So as we go through this shot now, we've got the exposure being lowered on the plate. We've got this glow being keyframed here, certain spots. Kind of bring down the glow here to give the audience a good second to really appreciate the details in this fireball. And then to art direct the shot further, we increase the glow to where it's almost, almost blowing out the whole image and then bring it down a little bit at the end so that when we transition to the second part of this shot, which is supposed to be the same effect, but as seen from an aerial perspective, we can then go over how to create this so that the two shots flow together nicely like this. So a few more steps in this second shot because we're also incorporating a shock wave that can be seen on the ground here as well as our asset here. So let's break down how we created this. 
So the first thing is uh, the assets we're going to be using. We're going to be using nuclear shockwave the, from the satellite perspective and also planet impact 01 and 02 from the aerial perspectives. And so we'll start with having a look at what we did with the shockwaves. So we've got the first shockwave here, which we have slowed down using a time stretch factor of 400. And then we've simply added pixel motion blur to the frame blending, which we can then enable here before we render, but it is quite an expensive effect. So we'll keep it off for now. Then we've simply duplicated the shockwave asset again. In order to composite these into the scene, for the first asset, we're setting that to a hard light mode here, which is sort of just giving us the shadows of the shockwave. Colors might be a little bit uh, too much gamma there, so we'll simply add a, a tint effect here so it sort of matches the environment a bit more. And then we've also added a compound blur as well, which just sort of softens out the effect. I guess you could use any blur for that. Then we're actually bringing back the highlights here. Again, it's got a tint effect just to make it more, more brownish. And this time we're actually using a screen blending mode. So now we've got the contrast of the shadows and the highlights, which gives us this effect here. Now it's still looking a little bit too sharp. So we've also created an adjustment layer here. And we've added a CC light burst effect and we've also added a tint effect as well. And so this is sort of what's happening with the shockwave here. Obviously, it's giving us the nice sort of volumetric look we want from this effect, but it's a little bit too extreme. So I've simply duplicated the plate and then overlaid that on top of the effect. And what I want to happen here is with by using an extraction for the luminance channel, I want to have it so that uh, we just bring in the shadows and the darker areas here so that when we overlay that on top of this effect, we still keep some of it, but it's much more subdued. So this gives us the dust for our shockwave, but I also want to see that ring expanding. So I've simply duplicated the shockwave again, set the blending mode to normal, and I've offset it so we actually see an earlier point in time here. So if we just play this through so far, it's quite a subtle effect, but you can see the ring expanding here. We have slowed it down by a stretch factor of 400, so we are going to be using pixel motion blur to smooth that out before we render it, but that gives us our a nice starting point here. So then let's actually bring in the planet impact itself. So we'll bring this in here. Obviously, we uh, when we bring this asset in, it is lit from a certain direction. So depending on which direction the light is coming from, we can simply just flip this so that it matches the shadows. And we're going to do some basic uh, color correction here using Lumetri color, which is mostly just darkening the shadows and adding a little bit of a warm tint to it all in one effect and we're also going to boost the alpha channel of the effect as well so we get a more dramatic effect and then I also brought in the planet impact 02 made sure it was positioned in exactly the same place and I simply just changed the blending mode to lighten. So that just allows the highlights from the other asset to sort of be overlaid. So now we're getting even more detail in that effect. And they even went one step further, which isn't really necessary, but I decided to bring in the nuclear explosion effect, if I can find it here. So I brought this effect in I decided that the very beginning of this effect here might add an extra sort of nice sort of light bulb effect to the actual explosion. So what I simply did is I simply just animated it to follow the explosion here. 
you can see it's simply just been simply just freeze framed the asset and then manually animated it there and then changed the blending mode to overlay so it just creates a very subtle effect here that just sort of helps to highlight the contours of this effect here and then I've also duplicated it again added a Gaussian blur curves adjustment uh, on the alpha channel here and then set that to hard light which will just give us this more subtle glow and so this is looking pretty good so far but we can further enhance the shot with some more color correction techniques so if we pre-compose all of this so that we're looking at it in a pre-comp here still keep this at obviously at full res we've got really nice details but these are 4k clips so we're going to keep this in half res for now and also let's just make sure we haven't missed anything here with the plate we're also going to be doing the same technique we used before which is to animate the exposure here subtle little effect there which is lowering the exposure a little bit at the beginning there so if we go back to the final comp here what we can do and this is a, a general trick you can use to make sort of any shot look a little bit nicer is you simply just duplicate the whole shot with all of the effects you add a tint effect to it here then you add a fast blur or any any blur that you want we just want to blur it enough something like this and then we can change this to either soft light gives us something like this or we can go a bit more extreme and go hard light and you see with this one little technique here we've just sort of made it look more outdoorsy a little bit more dramatic just with a simple effect there then we can go and add an adjustment layer a lumetri color and we'll just come down here to the vignette section put negative one there so that gives us darkens the edges a bit and also boost the contrast if we want to it's all about making the shot look as nice as possible then we can add a subtle noise effect here so if we come in to full res here it's just going to help sell the illusion that this is a uh, it's going to add the grain over the whole thing just to help everything fit together and then finally we can add an actual uh, artistic glow to the beginning here so since I want this to be a little bit brighter for a few frames since we are coming from the last shot we saw was this so we kind of want to make sure that that glow is being animated into the second shot so with an adjustment layer we'll add another lumetri color and with this one we're just putting the exposure up to almost three and that's the only effect we're doing there and then we're animating the opacity over the whole shot from 100 down to zero so if we have a look at this and just preview the beginning section here so it just has that little extra glow at the beginning to help the transition between the two shots and then when you render everything with motion blur and frame blending at full resolution you get something that looks like this